Well, welcome to Sakshi Apologetics Network, English series on uh, refuting Rajiv Malhotra and his false claims with his fake scholars that he's bringing on day by day, trying to intimidate Christian uh, faith and especially followers of Christ in uh, India. So this, uh, in this episode, we will be looking at various claims that uh, the so-called um, scholar who claimed to be a research scholar in the beginning and then claimed to be an MDiv, uh, MDiv course uh, uh, registry and then uh, claimed to be uh, passing that course and then claiming to be distance education and so on and so forth. So we will um, we will be discussing about few of those issues that we have seen in their previous video, uh, which was uh, which was uh, uh, um, you know which was published on Rajiv Malhotra's channel, and we will be discussing few points from that video. So to discuss those issues, we have uh, uh, our brothers, brother George and brother Bibu, with us. I would like to introduce brother George and brother Bibu. And welcome, Brother George and Brother Bibu, into uh, this session. Thank you, Brother. Yeah, we will be discussing, uh, you know, few few of these uh, uh, items as we go ahead. And uh, uh, just to begin with, I would like to ask you, George. Uh, you know, we have seen quite a number of uh, videos from Rajiv Malhotra, especially in one of those videos, he says that you know, uh, Britishers introduced caste system or Mughals introduced caste system into India, whereas in India there is no caste system. It's all you know, brotherhood and all of that, you know, fake uh, that he propagates. Out of this, um, you know, uh, propagation media that he hires, and out of those false claims, and he brought, he brings up this person again, and, he, and this person says that when she goes and plays with uh, Christians and Muslims or non-Brahmin cars, when she gets back to home, she is asked, or you know, as she says in that video, she'll be asked to wash herself and remove her clothes and you know wear uh, wear different clothes before she get, gets into the actual house. So how do we see it? Like where does this person Rajiv Malhotra stands? And we invited him for a public debate. We invited him for a discussion, and he ran away anyways. But what do you? How do you see this guy? So if Rajiv Malhotra says that uh, the Britishers have bought in caste system mm -hmm. in the name of divide and rule, uh, then he should accept that Bhagavad Gita, as they believe in, was introduced by the Britishers. Mm -hmm. The Manu was Manu uh, Smriti was written by the Britishers because uh, ba uh, Bhagavad Gita in chapter 18 was uh, 42 to 44. It speaks about the caste system and Manu chapter 1, 91, and you know many many verses speaks about the caste system and the rights of Brahmins, exclusive rights of Brahmins to educate themselves. And it speaks about uh, the you know the right of a Shudra only to serve. Mm. You know, Shudra doesn't have any rights. Right. Uh, and they have to only serve. So if he says Britishers are bought in, mm -hmm. then he should accept that all these things were written by the Britishers. Mm -hmm. And if he says that this is this existed from time immem immemorial mm -hmm. or you know since ages, uh, as they speak of Bhagavad Gita, Ramayana and things like that, then you know, the Britishers weren't the ones who introduced it. Or maybe Mughals. Oh, you know, then he should, you know, then he should accept the history mm -hmm. according to his claim. Mm -hmm. You know, as I, uh, you know, as I said, uh, as I spoke, I know they can go and refer back to Bhagavad Gita mm -hmm. and look up what it says there. So, and so you're saying if uh, if caste system was introduced by Mughals, then Bhagavad Gita should have been written after Mughals. If caste system at least was by the Mughals. By the Mughals. Uh, if, if caste system was introduced or prolonged from Mughals by Britishers, then Bhagavad Gita and all other like Manuspriti, everything that you're mentioning, should have been written or, you know, during these yeah. two regimes is what yeah. you're trying to yeah. say. So that means okay. the religion is very recent, mm -hmm. very recent than Christianity, mm -hmm. and, you know, very recent than, you know, uh, even Sikhism. Uh, so that proves the claims of Rajiv Malhotra. As he is yeah. not a scholar at all. Oh, yeah. And how does he think uh, mm -hmm. to make such claims? Mm -hmm. And in fact, I would say if you read history, uh, you know, the Brahmins were the ones who partnered with the Britishers mm -hmm. and they were called revenue Brahmins. They collected mm -hmm. tax uh, extracting, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, from the workers mm -hmm. and the population of India and they collected tax and gave it to the British. Mm -hmm. That means they helped uh, the British to loot India. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so uh, Bibu, what do you say? Like, do you still think that caste system exists in India? Uh, if it doesn't exist, uh, based on this video, if it doesn't exist, uh, you know, Rajiv Malhotra scores a mark. Yeah. And if ex if it exists, then uh, uh, Esther Dhanraj, who calls herself an ex-Christian, ex actually she is an ex-Hindu, uh, she, mm -hmm. she she gains a mark. No matter who, who gains a mark, does that video still be, you know, reliable? No, in fact, um, it, it raises serious concerns uh, when you look at uh, the video because... Uh, um, Kamakshi seems to be calling herself a Brahmin, particularly, particularly to convey this point that, uh, uh, you know, uh, they were a family which was kept from mingling with uh, Christians and Muslims. Mm. So much so that even when they went out to play, they had to come back and then change the clothes before entering into the house. Yeah. Okay, so that is uh, really practicing untouchability. Mm. Okay, I mean, uh, uh, if we were to take uh, uh, Kamakshi's statements as uh, the standard, mm. 
and if we were to understand that this is how brahmins are taught to practice mm-hmm. then it really raises questions about whether brahmins in india still practice untouchability yeah or or maybe brahmins yeah. in even us like rajiv malhotra is he still practicing yeah. uh, untouchability or is he still promoting untouchability sitting in us yeah because they might hypocritically correspond with everybody else and speak and mingle with everybody else and then go back home and you know wash themselves with a the ceremonial cleansing because they're defiled by you know interacting with uh, somebody who is a non brahmin mm. which is which is which is really uh, you know very concerning in fact mm. okay uh, i mean this exposes the the kind of uh, religion that brahmanism is in fact okay you know uh, i'm not talking about brahmins as a community in that sense but uh, mm-hmm. brahmanism as a, a thought as an ideology as a religion right uh, yeah. know, which which uh, uh, makes certain people untouchable right yeah yeah so so yeah. we need to be thinking about these mm-hmm. in, in these lines as well whether rajiv malhotra is true or um kamakshi dhanraj or esther dhanraj is true if one is true the other stands false so we need to uh, we need to question and as uh, kamakshi garu really asked in the second video that let indian christians question let us question this video as well right so uh, as a practice of that questioning we will be continuing this video with uh, with few other things and uh, uh, you know asking brother bibu uh, bibu it, she says that her mother was um, you know she fell ill with a very minor uh, whatever ailment she had and during that ailment if a pastor could uh, a pastor or a neighbor whatever she mentioned a christian basically he could sell jesus to them yeah. and uh, you know and at the same time she also says that we are orthodox orthodox hindus and we could be washed ourselves ceremonially even we touch people and all but with that kind of orthodox hindu uh, with that kind of strong uh, hindu roots or hindutva roots in them uh, a pastor could sell jesus to them okay. what kind of how much vulnerable can a small um, ailment can bring into your life that you you sell away or you you purchase some other god and you sell away your faith yeah in fact um, you know she has uh, now claimed to be an ex christian she has left her christian faith mm-hmm. and so she wants to also Uh, you know undermine the conversion of the family mm. and show it in a uh, you know in a light as if that conversion was not valid so she tries to you know uh, uh, present some stories before us uh, which is riddled with many contradictions mm. i mean if, uh, like you rightly point out she says um, you know that her mother was suffering from some minor illness mm-hmm. and then one really wonders when she says this made uh, this put the family in a vulnerable situation to the extent that somebody can come in you know uh, sell a religion to them which is quite contrary to their orthodox traditional religion that they have been following until then mm. and this religion which they were willing to buy now is the same religion with which they were not supposed to even mingle right you know yeah it is a religion of the untouchable if i if, if i may so call it mm-hmm. yeah in their opinion in their least. opinion at least yeah yeah, yeah. so they, uh, i mean the vulnerability was so serious mm. with a minor illness mm. that they would even be willing to buy a religion of the untouchable in exchange for their orthodox traditional great uh, mm. you know religion whatever well the calls for yeah. a question how strong yeah. this religion or, or what good this this religion made to the family and, and you know you know no, coming, in fact, yeah. uh, the, the the focus is on the the, the contradiction mm-hmm. that it is a minor sickness and then right. she would say uh, that made them vulnerable right <laughs> you know i mean uh, this this entire testimony is riddled with many contradictions like that if you mm-hmm. if you go through i mean yeah. in fact uh, if i can point out a couple of more yeah yeah please yeah, go ahead yeah, yeah. you say, you say you're saying that yeah, the, yeah. the statements yeah. uh, esther or kamachi dandraj is making are not reliable yes. they're not credible based on her own uh so explanation correct yeah. right yeah because yeah. she she makes a statement and then makes another statement which goes hmm. uh, about to just contradict what she had said earlier okay. you know yeah so um, this is one example mm-hmm. and then then she goes on to say you know that uh, when rajiv malhotra asks her about uh, her father's uh, christian uh, faith hmm. she says uh, you know uh, thinking back now she would say her father is a skeptic right he was uh, always confused between her, his traditional faith and the new found faith that he is now into hmm. you know so uh, that is one statement she makes yeah. and then she says they even paid the price of being ostracized by all their leaders mm-hmm. for embracing christianity mm-hmm. so one would really wonder whether you know somebody would be a skeptic and pay such a huge price of being ostracized by uh, their leaders uh, for something that they are skeptical about for 20 long years right right <laughs> okay and and another thing is she says on uh, you know she says that her father was a skeptic mm-hmm. and then she again goes on to say in another statement that her father was a bible believing christian right okay right. So isn't that a contradiction in no, itself no, absolutely i mean a bible believing christian with a skeptic mm. What do you say George is it possible that a bible believing christian be a skeptic i mean maybe a scholar mm-hmm. uh, who went around places mm-hmm. uh, didn't know what to do mm-hmm. and you know joined a correspondence course mm-hmm. uh, by paying huge amount of money when mm-hmm. the college website itself says that they offer the cheapest courses in yeah. uh, in us mm-hmm. uh, and even the regular courses do not cost 100000 mm-hmm. uh, yeah in telugu videos she said all of that yeah, yeah, that yeah. she was it just because mean, of this course uh, i mean <laughs> yeah uh, yeah so uh, for a scholar like that who has who sits at home and studies mm. and for a scholar who doesn't know any languages uh, biblical languages and uh, you know uh, maybe you know she doesn't understand what's a contradiction at all mm. uh, so 
you know, but she claims she, she studied uh, politics. See, uh, what I would say is pointing out to the past when she was speaking in Telugu, mm. uh, what we see is her contradictions were pointed out uh, by uh, a sister uh, called uh, Jai Gita, I think. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, she could point out as a, you, know, you, somebody, mean, you mean somebody, somebody who hasn't studied mm-hmm. apologetics, somebody mm-hmm. who hasn't went to a, a theological college could the basic, punch basic, holes yeah. into her argument and say that, uh, you know, she committed fallacy after fallacy when she was speaking. Mm. Uh, one statement contradicts the other. Mm. In the same breath, she says that uh, her father was a skeptic. And then she says that her father is a Bible-believing Christian. Mm. You know, there are many things that she says. She commits an HD fa- uh, generalization too. Even Raji Malhotra, mm. he generalizes that Christians, you know. Uh, so he says that Indian Christians don't think, you know, don't, they don't ask critical questions. They are offended mm. uh, by the questions. That, uh, well, he, he the critiques are great Americans. So yeah. he obviously will look down upon Christians. Uh, a proud, I mean, yeah, yeah. proud American. Yeah. 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 So he, he will obviously look down upon Indians. Yeah. 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 So, on breaking India anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so as an American, he wants to break India. Yeah. So he has joined with the white, should we say that? Yeah. Uh, or the Britishers or, you know, the immigrant Britishers to America. Mm. So should we say that? Mm. I mean, then he is, you know, he should, we don't know how should we should treat him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, uh, when he's saying that, you know, he makes an AST generalization there, uh, saying if, you know, as if every Christian is that way. She too speaks like that. You know, in fact, she commits the fallacy of uh, attributing her experience mm. To the Christians. Mm. You know, when she started off as a Christian, she didn't have any intellectual pursuits mm. regarding the faith. Actually, this raises a question again. Mm. Uh, uh, that, uh, like, she claims or she says, I mean, I, I also interacted with the family members, and they also confirmed that their father is well read, well educated. Mm. Yes. He's, um, he's, uh, he's, he can think of, think uh, independently, yeah. and uh, he's a bold guy. He takes decisions on his own, etc., etc., etc. Being an Indian, so he is uh, gullible, mm. according to her, and according to the stage that she, that she is yeah. sharing with uh, Shri Raji Malhotra Sahab. Yeah. According to Raji Malhotra Sahab, uh, Kamakshi Dhanraj or Esther Dhanraj's father is gullible. He is unread. He, he doesn't ask critical questions. He is, uh, you know, he is very weak in his in his faith. He fell for emotion or whatever. What do you think, Bibu? What okay. made him follow or be uh, to be ostracized for yeah. 20 years of the yeah. faith that he's following? Yeah. So in fact, uh, so in fact, uh, Kamakshi in her video also goes on to acknowledge that her father is well read and well exposed. Mm. Okay, uh, but while acknowledging that, she says, uh, you know, uh, that when she thinks back now, the uh, the miraculous healing that her mother underwent for that whatever small ailment right. is no is by no stretch of imagination a miracle. Mm. So she's saying that her well-read, well-exposed father uh, has an error of judgment. He, he couldn't discern things properly as she is able to discern now. Yeah, you know what we understand is 20, 25 years back, she was a child of 12, 13 years when all mm. this incident happened. Mm. So now she's in a position to think back and analyze, analyze better what she saw in her childhood, what uh, her father could not really discern when he was actually going through. Mm, mm. So this is another contradiction that I find in her. Right, you know, right, so. yeah. And, and, and this also raises another question to yeah. you, George. Um, you know, it, she herself says that her father and her mm. family, entire family, was ostracized by, you know, their community for accepting Christianity, mm. right? So do you think that, you know, based on Rajiv Malhotra's thing that, you know, we are, we accept everyone, we are, we are uh, you know, we embrace everyone, and etc., 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 all these uh, uh, stories that he makes out. Mm. So is he, is he agreeing now that, you know, that ostracizing happens in India for being a Christian? Uh, I mean, that's was that's what uh, Esther Kamachi said, mm. and in fact, uh, you know, Rajiv Malhotra though he speaks that the ostracizing doesn't happen, mm. uh, you know, sometimes. But so when uh, when Rajiv Malhotra says that you know people would be ostracized for becoming Christians, mm-hmm. and especially a Brahmin family, person coming from a Brahmin family or a high caste Hindu uh, would go through that experience, though he denies it, mm-hmm. uh, he would go through that experience because you know they assume that these following these guys have gone to follow the uh, religion of the Shudra mm-hmm. or the untouchable, mm-hmm. so. Because of that, they would start treating the other person that way. Mm. And in fact, uh, the Manu is ingrained in their mind and it cannot go. In fact, the Indian mindset thinks about caste and Mm. we have spoken in so many videos Mm. and uh, we have condemned the caste system within the church as well Mm. and told that the Bible doesn't support caste system. Mm. Only the Manu Smriti, the Gita, Bhagavad Gita supports caste system. Mm. So if someone wants to follow the Bible sincerely, I mean, they shouldn't shouldn't be following the caste. Yeah. And, And in fact, uh, there is a from a Christian side, the approach is very friendly, even to the uh, you know the unbelieving, uh, ostracizing uh, relatives. Yeah, but but interestingly, she also says that her father and mother they never imposed their newly converted religion onto the children. How do you see this, uh, George? See, uh, in fact, I see it as a contradiction mm-hmm. when she's saying this uh, because uh, you know on one hand. She speaks as if you know she was very gullible. Now she is very intelligent. Mm-hmm. She has decided. Okay. And uh, but her father gave and mother, father and mother gave her her own choice mm-hmm. to decide even back then. Mm-hmm. So she has made her own choice. Didn't follow uh, outrightly her father's and mother's footsteps. Mm-hmm. That means she made a, a volitional, deliberate choice to be a Christian. To be a Christian. Mm-hmm. And you know she she has come back 
uh, but what makes the brothers and you know the relatives who have become christian to continue in the same uh, you know ostracizing mm. or you know uh, in the christian faith mm. where they have to go through that experience of being ostracized by the mm. uh, relatives right. they're continuing in the same thing mm-hmm. and she categorically mentions that her brothers and her relatives whoever was part of the family mm-hmm. went uh, through the experience of individually making that choice mm. she you know maybe she made a choice at one point her brothers and you know whom we spoke to they made a choice at a different point not mm. along with her yeah that means it was an individual choice yeah. so what is the you know the vulnerability of a parents was different then mm. what is the vulnerability of a brothers right and what was the vulnerability of hers who sold jesus to who them who sold jesus to them then mm. that means you know the one it you know it, uh, according to her uh, at least from this video uh, the conversion of a parents really didn't affect them mm. much because it was a freedom given yeah. and the choice was made later right right so, so maybe it was a there it had a little effect but not mm, much mm. because the choice was made later that means they contemplated it mm. you know maybe our brothers would have done some research and study mm. uh, about her uh, their religion too yeah so so what we see today in the community brother bibu yeah. is you know we obviously see that that much that, that kind of freedom from the parents is not always given to children yeah. but in this case uh, kamakshi herself says that their father and mother gave them the freedom to choose yes. the religion was not imposed on them that yeah. was the words that they, she used right. how do you see this i mean do you see that christianity uh, is sold to people is you know forced upon people yeah. is uh, is manipulated and then you know uh, ingrained into people or even the family members are not doing this in this case in in her own words right. how do you see this well um first of all i really respect uh, this family which mm-hmm. has uh, given that freedom to the children to understand christianity and then come into it because i i can kind of see the maturity of uh, the parents in understanding christian faith that it is not something that can be imposed it is something that has to be volitionally received mm. you know so uh, i really appreciate uh, that choice that was given to them uh, and uh, i i wish everybody understood this that christianity is not something that can be imposed it doesn't come by birth it doesn't come by uh, uh, force it doesn't come by uh, alluring somebody into it mm. it is somebody's personal choice in fact yeah yeah, yeah. and in fact uh, you know uh that's why the mm. imposing aspect mm. of hinduism you know in reconversion or mm. garvapasi mm. it is imposing which is the, which is being funded by movement also yeah, yeah which is which is being funded by rajiv malhotra yeah, yeah. he he begs money for that he he has these websites you can see it on screen where he asks money he he begs money to divide india to break india and to reconvert people by force and by allurement by the policies of the government by you know bringing in presidential orders and stuff like that right so we all know it yeah so you know the reconversion uh, or you know garvapasi happens because uh you know a low caste person cannot be a brahmin he is mm. a low caste by birth mm. a brahmin cannot be somebody mm. else so they are by birth whatever they are mm. it is not a choice mm. so if you know even uh, that's why they keep saying mm. that everyone in india is a hindu mm. because by birth you are a hindu mm. according to them at least mm. you know though we choose to follow uh, something else we have denied you know whatever the bhagavad gita and everything mm. describes about caste system you have chosen to follow what is equal mm. gives gives equal uh, status what kind of world view is this uh, george and uh, um, you know what kind of world view do you think this is because rajiv malhotra says that you know you know to the audience he says you see these guys are not gullible low caste <coughs> easily manipulatable people these are high caste brahmins he says like that on the yeah. video yes. what, what does he mean i mean what what does he actually mean when he says these are not low caste people or big people these are high caste brahmins what kind of he lives in us and he practices this kind of uh, caste system in us isn't this discrimination absolutely no i would say that you know is he being a brahmin he has bought into the brahmanism or manuvad mm. uh, as we say in hindi mm. uh, so he has bought into that he and he sold himself completely to it and you know from that perspective he is speaking uh, and he is arguing that you know something like gandhi as he said you know these people who convert are like cows who do not think and they do not analyze and think and you know go to get into that faith but you know they simply get into the faith like just like a cow is driven uh, you know uh, these people come into the faith then you know rajiv manotra i think at least would agree that uh, ambedkar who supported conversion and he himself converted mm. uh you know and he reject and he said that i i am not a hindu at all mm. uh i don't want to be a hindu mm. and he went to something else and that means he supported conversion and you know when he supported conversion and he was a shudra and was not untouchable he was not a thinking person i think he was much better than rajiv manotra and well, at least in education wise scholar, well the fake scholar may disagree with you he is at par or at least you know he is way better than all these scholars oh, even ambedkar oh yeah well yeah come on <laughs> i would i would i would totally disagree with this nation if you look at this guy he begs for nation and he writes three books with that begged money and he sends it to divide india or break india i mean better, what is ambedkar <laughs> better than ambedkar rajiv manotra it oh, could yeah. be a joke i mean i i i know rajiv manotra intellect is to such a level that i don't know whether he would call it a fake no his intellectual level is uh, to such a degree that you know i don't know whether you would even understand what ambedkar says in few of his books mm-hmm. you know it, yeah. it is at that level yeah. you know, rajiv manotra in the same video as he interviews uh, kamakshi uh, they both contradict each other yeah yeah, yeah. so at so many places yeah. and he doesn't 
uh, realize uh, that he is committing hasty generalization. So well, when you, places, you speak technical terms like that, he'll go Google it. <laughs> See, that's the level. If you're yeah. comparing with Ambedkar, sorry, I mean, yeah. sorry to, you know, I should, I would totally disagree that it is, he is no way uh, that you can compare him with, uh, you know, such a stalwart like Ambedkar. Yeah. So, so Bibu, uh, yeah. when Kamakshi speaks about uh, Indian yeah. Christians, she says Indian Christians have become more persistent now. Uh -huh. uh, and based on her, her excellent research that yeah. she made, she yeah. understood yeah. that, uh, you know, the, the church has become more persistent these days. And yeah. uh, you know uh, they have developed this yeah. this apologetics yeah, yeah, this she, and she, that you know yeah. and and then he the, the Rajiv Malhotra comments oh so much mm. for a for a scholarship like this and you know he goes on stating like that yeah. what do you think about yeah, it in fact she says uh, uh, the, the Christians have evolved now to be persistent converters mm. that's what she says yeah now I mean if you if if she has really studied the church history mm. I mean starting from the apostolic era Christianity has always been a disciple making religion mm. it has always taught and imparted this faith to people all around mm. you know I mean. Uh, and in fact, that was a great commission given by uh, Jesus Christ oh, yeah. to the church. Oh, yeah. And we are, not, we, are, yes. we, are, we, are yeah. we are not ashamed of it. Yeah, we are not ashamed of it. Oh, and yeah. so, I mean, I don't know what is evolution about it. Maybe, oh, yeah. maybe her understanding is evolving now, so right. that she's able to see that in a better light now. Mm. You know, but we have always been like that. I mean, she says this in a context where she says, back then there was no Christian bashing 20, 25 years back. Mm. Again, that, that raises questions uh, about, I mean, even uh, Raji Malhotra tries to give her some uh, relief there by asking, were you too young to discern if there was some attack against uh, the Hindu faith? Mm -hmm. She says, no, 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 it was not about uh, being too young, but back then there was no... Uh, Hindu bashing. But what she needs to understand is that the critical evaluation of a religion mm. was always a part of every comparative study and every religion oh, yeah. was critiqued. Yes. Including Christianity, Hinduism, Islam, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. So probably she, 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 she was perhaps now new into it. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, she's she's probably yeah, she's yeah. evolving now. Yeah. Yeah. And trying to see what, what went into the Absolutely. history of you know humankind. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to point out that she speaks about a voluminous book uh, before her on the desk mm. uh, on church history. Mm. <laughs> I mean I really doubt whether she read that book mm. Mm. because you know, had she read, like give, her she read doubt. give her the benefit of doubt. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, maybe she would have read it. Yeah. I, I, know, I don't know whether she read the Bible mm. okay. in that case because, you know, the Bible letters, at least if you read the introduction mm. of any study Bible, mm. you would come to know that most of the letters and, you know, even the Gospel of John mm. uh, was in response to uh, cultic faiths that mm. were springing up. So mm. it was an apologetic. Mm. It was a response mm. uh, to Gnosticism and, you know, many, many cultic faiths. Mm. So right from the Apostles' time, it was a faith which interacted with other faiths so and responded to critical evaluation. Right. And in fact, Athanasius, if you see, he responded to critical evaluation. Yeah, then, you know, Raja Malhotra might ask, when did he live in Rajiv Gandhi's era or in Indira Gandhi's era? Why would he ask that? That's the, that's the scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe, you know, it is just like what the present government yeah, what is I'm doing. You, what I'm asking you, George, is, you know, use simple words, otherwise you'll have to go Google again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, maybe, see, there are many people, if you read Augustine, he responded to critical evaluation. He responded to critiques. Oh, Augustine, the, one, the same one that went to Little Flower School. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, this was, he was a fourth century, fourth century really monk. <laughs> he was from Hippo. Hippo. Yeah. So you're talking That's about third century, fourth century, yeah. fifth century. So, so Christianity has uh, been interacting no, with why I other faiths. Yeah. From that yeah, time. Why I mentioned this is, you know, for all the scholarship that uh, Sakamakshi is brought forward, mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, she's a big scholar and all with a big book before a desk. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I raised these questions mm -hmm. because these people were interacting and these people were apologetic about the faith right. with other religions, right. other faiths. Mm -hmm. And she says that, you know, now these people have become, you know, uh, aggressively critiquing or, you know, aggressively evangelistic <laughs> and stuff, something like that. It was always like that. I mean, right from the beginning, the apostles were like that. Right. And in fact, Jesus was like that. Mm -hmm. the Jew in the Jewish faith, he mm -hmm. critiqued the scholars of his day, mm -hmm. even at the age 12. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, we follow Jesus' example. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know what she learned in church history then. Mm -hmm. And so much for his scholarship. And that's why I think they failed her. She confesses that, right? That, she, that, that they failed her. Mm -hmm. And maybe she produced, you know, stuff like this, mm -hmm. which is so shallow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. See, one more thing that I would like to point out is, uh, see, I mean, they were called it is at hominem. Uh, see, uh, no, I'm rightly speaking, you know, if she is a scholar, then she should know the languages first. And uh, I train people, uh, you know, I train young people in, in languages. So uh, we have people who are young who speak, or, you know, who read from the Greek Bible. Mm -hmm. Well, your son, he's, uh, he's like, what, eight? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, uh, I, if I hand over a Greek Bible to her, I don't know whether she'll be able to read. And she claims to be a scholar of the Bible. Come on, that must be a joke. And, mm -hmm. you know, we need not boast about an MDiv. Mm -hmm. See, Master of Divinity, which doesn't teach you to read the original text, right? In the original language that yeah. which was written to. Yeah. Written in. Yeah. So, so this is just a bumper sticker to attract, you know, the, to just give a, a pumping light on her for the other faiths who do not understand what the study is actually. Yeah. So this is just a beginner's study for people who have a graduation in any field. They can get into See, theology. Even, even what she speaks of, uh, you know, when she speaks about how to study, mm. she speaks about when, what, where, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Right. That we teach in Sunday school. Well, that raises a question. She didn't go to Sunday school. That's what she says. Right. Yeah. But, you know, had she gone, had mm. she been saved, you know, had she gone to Sunday school, 
you know, at least a good Sunday school mm. would teach to study the Bible when, what, where, how, and all those things we teach. Yeah, that, is that, is the, that is the scholarship she speaks mm. yeah. after going to MD. Yeah. And of course, Sunday school. Come on, Sunday school would teach better stuff than what you learned in our seminar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me. Let yeah. me. That, that raises another yeah. important question, yeah. and let me come to that question. So Raju Manotra mm-hmm. takes these books, uh, you know, Survey of Old Testament or Church History, etc., and he says two kg, one kg. So, so out of this, what did you get? Nothing. That's how he, you know, he kind of uh, tries to put down on the Christian thought. I would like to ask, what, like, look at this. This is Rigveda. Huh? Can you, you know, you may think that is just a box. Why don't you open it and remove the, you know, Vedas. Yeah, books. Vedas. Why don't you remove it, you know, one by one, so that they would know that it is not just put in a box. This is. Oh, this might be, you know, everything together might be ten kgs. Put it over it. Yeah. Okay, one more. Oh, Bibu would not be seen now. <laughs> His face wouldn't be seen. And the, oh, there are more boxes here. You know, we can do exercise with this. Oh yeah. With this. I mean, this is what. And the irony is not about these books. The irony is this. Um, Kamakshi says the Hindu priests are not teaching anything to the kids. See, that's a contradiction. That is a contradiction. Uh, uh, she I, talks about when, what, where, why, etc. And she says the Hindu priests are not teaching their kids. You know, with all of these hundreds of kilos, what do they get? Uh, in fact, she says uh, the, Hindu, uh-huh. the, the Hindu uh, uh, priest only talks about scriptures which nobody understands. Yeah. So, <laughs> so is 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 at least is yeah. Raju Manotra agrees with it? Yeah. I think he agrees. If they have both interviewed each other, he, you know, I assume that they agree. Mm-hmm. That means the Hindu priests deliberately keep. The masses in darkness. darkness in darkness. Mm-hmm. Uh, that means they teach in a way so that you know people they don't, don't understand, understand. Mm-hmm. when, what, where, why. Yeah. They don't understand. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Out of these these kilo, these hundreds of kilos, they don't understand yeah. anything. Is what the statement is. Yeah. See. Uh, so you know we should ask Raji Malhotra. Mm-hmm. You know what kind of logic he follows. Mm-hmm. You know to make uh, statements like that and you know bring a scholar. You know claims uh, claiming to be a scholar and how could he how could he not evaluate that uh, you know she is a fake scholar. Mm. In fact, this is also a, a, a comparison that we can make on the two worldviews. The Bible, in fact, uh, demands that it should be taught to everyone without any discrimination, whatever. Uh, go into the world and, uh, you know, preach. It says, go make uh, disciples of all nations. Mm. Okay, but um, uh, when you look at the uh, Manusmurti, for instance, you know, there are injunctions, there are clear uh, prohibitions of how a Brahmin is not supposed to teach the Vedas to the Shudra. Mm. And it also lays down the kind of punishments that must be meted out to right. Shudras who would hear right. anything read out from the Vedas. Mm. And uh, a Brahmin is also threatened of uh, suffering along with the Shudra in a hell called Asamrita if mm. he happens to ever you know, recite uh, anything uh, from the Vedas uh, in a Shudra's hearing. Mm. So, I mean, so no wonder the priest, you know, always uh, presents the message in an obscure way that nobody understands it. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. might be intentional is what I would say. Right. In yeah. fact, uh, yeah. Manuspriti says that, that if a Shudra intentionally listens mm. uh, to the Vedas, you know, there is a punishment that should be given to him. Mm. Mm. So, I mean, Raji Manotra might be so. So that, that again that. raises another question. Probably we will wind up this show with this with this last question, and we will we will uh, you know resume again in the next episode with further more questions. Uh, she, I mean, Kamakshi always you know talks about being Brahmin Christian, Brahmin Christian. Mm. You know, uh, at least in that video, she called herself Brahmin Christian quite a number of times. Uh, what do you mean by Brahmin Christian? Is there anything like Brahmin Christian? Or with that, what do you what? What, what do you understand from that? The state of mind of Kamakshi. Is she re- was she really Christian? Or was she a Brahmin? Can there be a Brahmin Christian? Or or can, uh, I mean, is her state of mind still in that Sanatana Dharma? Uh, in fact, uh, Hinduism must be given the exclusive credit mm. for dividing humanity into the four castes. Mm. Or uh, with a fifth one, which is unmentioned maybe. Right. Yeah. No matter whether they convert the religion also. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm. So, I mean, but, um, you know, as, as we all understand, you know, this, this caste system is based on how... Uh, uh, you know, the people belonging to different castes came out from different uh, 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 hierarchical parts of the Brahma, like from the mouth, from the mm-hmm. chest, from mm-hmm. the eye and from the uh, feet. Yeah. feet. Okay, But uh, uh, quite contrary to this worldview, the Bible in fact teaches that uh, God created man in his own image, in his own likeness. Mm. So in the Bible, uh, in Christianity, in a faith that is completely Bible-based, there is no scope for anything like a caste. There is no thought of a caste discrimination even remotely in the Bible. And so, uh, you know, to call somebody a Brahman Christian, mm. Uh, you know, it's, it's really a, a foreign expression. We don't even know what that is. In fact, mm. there's no such thing as a Brahmin Christian or a Shudra Christian. Mm. A Christian is a Christian. Mm. Uh, and in fact, if uh, somebody still wants to subscribe to the caste system, they can remain mm. in Hinduism. But mm. if somebody truly embraces Christianity, there is no place for yeah. uh, casteism in Christianity at all. Right. See, yeah. as I mentioned, Manu prescribes different laws mm. for different people. Mm. But the Bible is very clear mm. that there shall be one law for the native and for the sojourner. Yeah. For the sojourner. Yeah. So, I mean, the Bible is clear mm. that there should be one law. But, you know, she's saying that, uh, you know, she was a Brahmin Christian. The Bible is completely against that because the Bible is very clear. And it says there is neither Jew 
nor Gentile, uh, Gentile neither Greek nor Assyrian. So the Bible is clear that there is no distinctions as such. Hmm. You know, uh, when it comes to place of birth, somebody uh, may be a Jew by you know natural descent, but that shouldn't be a means to show discrimination against. Uh, when a law is implemented, mm. there should not be any partiality. But Manu is full of uh, partiality and you know special privileges to the Brahmins, mm. which the Bible is completely against. Mm. And you know maybe she didn't like Christianity mm. uh, because you know uh, the way she's talking now, Brahmin Christian, Brahmin Christian. Maybe she didn't have the elevated position uh, in the churches as a Brahmin Christian. Mm. Uh, you know when or maybe she lost that elevated position. Uh, in society, she would have got, got otherwise. Yeah, yeah, otherwise she would have, you know, got it. Mm. Maybe you not. Know, that's why she reverted. You know, she 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 seems to like the caste system so much now. Mm. Mm. Okay. So finally, what do you say, by George, to our viewers, uh, especially those uh, unthinking, very low um, uh, people who can't ask questions, people, you know, those gullible Christians, and also to those strong, you know, Brahmanical and very uh, scholarly uh, people like Malhotra Sahab and uh, people like uh, uh, Kamakshi. What do you have anything to say? See, I would say that, you know, I would ask uh, the Christians not to go by, uh, you know, people like uh, Kamakshi uh, because, you know, scholarship is hard work and I don't think she has put in that hard work to, mm. you know, call herself a scholar. And moreover, uh, she doesn't know many things. She doesn't know basic things. And more, first thing is, you know, she attributes a conversion experience with a broad brush mm -hmm. uh, or a hasty generalization mm -hmm. to entire Indian Christians mm -hmm. as if they're not critically thinking. Right. But a beginning of a Christian faith was like that. In mm. so many times she mentions, you know, as if it was a shock experience, mm. you know, when somebody mentioned about apparent contradictions mm. in the Bible. See, there, there's a world of difference between apparent contradiction and contradiction itself. Mm. And if being an intellectual, even our biblical critics, you know, who are hard critics of the Bible, like Bart Ehrman, Bart Ehrman mm -hmm. he understands between apparent contradiction and in fact, she cannot be compared with Bart Ehrman, sorry. Mm. I mean, Bart Ehrman into an extent. No, no, I'm not comparing him yeah. with Bart Ehrman. He, he's a professor oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, in a college, in a yeah. reputed college and, you know, he knows the languages. So, even as a critique of the Bible, who knows the original mm. languages, he says that Jesus is historical mm. and, you know, he understands between apparent contradictions and contradiction itself. Mm. She doesn't understand such basic thing mm. and she calls herself a scholar and, she wants to critique Christianity now. Mm. Now, because of such things, and she doesn't know the original languages to speak about the, you know, about the Bible as such. Now, why I'm saying again and again the original languages, when we produce videos, the Hindus, the people who support the uh, Manuvad, they have come forward and said <clears throat> again and again, do you know Sanskrit? Mm -hmm. Do you know Sanskrit? See, uh, I can read the Sanskrit script. I can go through historically whoever has written uh, commentaries on the Vedas and things like mm -hmm. that. And I can understand what the right. what the scriptures are saying. They don't want that. Mm. They want me to read Sanskrit. So I would expect if if you want to project yourself as a scholar, you better read the original text, not an interlinear, not anything, just the plain Greek and Hebrew text. So she doesn't know all that. She doesn't know basic logic. We you know Jay Gita, as I mentioned before, has critiqued her logical understanding. Her logic is when, what, where, then. Mm. Okay. I don't know whether she understands what the premise is, the terms of the premise, how the terms are related, mm. you know, mm. how, what, it, what are those called, you know, all those things I don't think she would understand. Maybe she would, she has to, you know, uh, spend maybe another 50 years for her kind of, uh, you know, scholarship and lazy work to come up with to such kind of uh, understanding. So I would say, you know, she shouldn't be taken seriously in that way. Uh, why we are refuting, you know, they, people may say, they, is there a contradiction because we, I'm saying she shouldn't be taken seriously, then why are we refuting her? For people who are gullible, who may think that she's a scholar. Mm. We want Hindus. You're talking about for Hindus Hindu and for Christians too. My statement that, you know, she shouldn't be taken seriously and our refutation, people may see it as a contradiction. Mm. But I wouldn't say that because people should be shown mm. what kind of a scholar she is. Mm. That's why we are speaking mm. and for the benefit of people, we want mm. to expose her scholarship and tell people that this is her level mm. and because of this level of hers, she shouldn't be taken seriously. Okay. What do you say, Bigo? Yeah. Both the, you know, all of all, all of our viewers. Yeah. In fact, uh, if if uh, Kamakshi wants to leave Christianity, that is her personal choice. Mm -hmm. We have nothing to do with it. In fact. Right. But when she says the reason for leaving Christianity is some problem with Christianity itself, mm. that raises concerns for us. Mm. And there are kind of certain allegations she makes, like she says there are contradictions in the Bible. Secondly, she says um, uh, that the defense that is given for the contradictions, the attempts that are made to resolve those con contradictions, fail at every level. Mm of logic, of uh, philosophy, of history, of uh, whatever discipline of study you take. Right. You know, it, it fails at every level, that is what mm. she says. Mm. Now, so the, 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 the burden of proof is on her. Right. Both present us with instances of contradictions mm. and also to present us with defense that fails at every level. Mm. To show how they are contradictory mm. 
how the passages in the bible are contradictory and then also to show how the defense that we give mm. does not suffice to resolve those uh, supposed con- contradictions right okay once she uh, so all i'm asking is you know uh, don't just make allegations against christianity mm. uh, furnish enough evidence mm. to back up what you're saying mm. and give us a fair opportunity to examine mm. i mean uh, both hindus and christians mm. uh, all the viewers give give all the viewers a fair opportunity to examine mm. whether her criticism of christianity is really valid or not mm. because we can examine the evidence for ourselves and find out whether uh, the, the the reasons why she left christianity are valid or not mm. i mean are there truly contradictions in in the, in the bible i mean right. does she really understand logic and has she really uh, properly analyzed uh, you know as she says uh, she's she's into reasoning and all that now mm. you know so uh, has she really understood the logical um, you know implications behind every purported or supposed um contradictions in the bible mm. uh, the reason why i'm saying that is she cannot even make a logical statement in a single uh, you know uh, line uh, i mean the reason why i'm saying that is i mean yeah in fact um, i would say she cannot even consistently make a logical statement sometimes i mean which is very evident from her video see mm. see i would like to mention there yeah. about you know how consistent she is yeah. you know in a single sentence she contradicts herself mm-hmm. and she calls herself a scholar mm-hmm. you know for example she's speaking you know raji malhotra and she speaking about uh, syncretism mm-hmm. uh you know from the conversation actually this is in the second, psycholo- video. In in the second, second video, video yeah you know, psychologically if you look at you know syncretism is something new word i think she she for her maybe for, yeah. for her maybe mm-hmm. you know that's how you know i felt from you know the way she spoke about syncretism yeah. and she says you know historically christianity originated uh you know through syncretism and all that and then she in the same sentence raji malhotra didn't interrupt her mm-hmm. and then she immediately says syncretism is only found in india mm. see syncretism Christianity originated through syncretism. Mm. Christi- syncretism is only f- syncretistic. Christianity is found only in India. Well, so yeah. what does it show? Yeah. That means Christianity has originated in India. Then, mm. would you know? She doesn't know the implications of her own statements. Right. So that is the shallow level at which she yeah. speaks. Yeah. So Bibu Bibu says that people should should uh, you know discern well, see the evidence. See yes, the, I'm know, asking for a very yeah. fair thing. In fact, fair. Yeah. 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 Uh, just just give us an opportunity to. Uh, I mean. Uh, see for ourselves the evidence that she's talking about mm. you know wh- what are those contradictions which mm. are really contradictions in the bible mm. uh, in fact she says she was taken by surprise mm. uh, when she saw that there are contradictions in the bible mm. i mean trust me almost from my eighth standard or so mm. i've been playing with supposed bible contradictions mm. in fact, the games for me in fact no brother okay, because i've always interestingly found a uh, very convincing solutions from within the text of the bible itself right yeah. for every every so called contradiction right. so so here is my challenge in fact and i'm only asking for a fair opportunity for all of us mm. give us those contradictions why are you afraid of them because right. because i mean when she was here in india mm. she she worked with another organization by name shiva shakti all of us know that mm. and then then also she promised us a series of videos mm. uh, promising to present us with all all evidences archaeological you know and uh, logical and what not mm. so archaeological maybe she's still digging out and you know <laughs> bringing out information mm. so i mean if she's done with all the digging mm. um, then i mean we are ready to take the evidence and examine it for ourselves yeah no yeah. But, you know in fact when you were 23 yeah. you wrote a book refuting ahmadi dad's allegations yeah. and and you know i think when she was 23 she was just uh, i don't know what she was doing she yeah. didn't she didn't she actually <laughs> she, she didn't did encou- she didn't encounter yeah. anything of scholarly level mm. and in fact my conversion itself is because of questions yes. people came and asked me questions mm. and i in search of answers i became a christian mm. you know why am you know people may think that you know i'm george so are you not a christian yeah. see christianity is not like the brahmin faith mm. or Ma- uh, manuvad you know nobody is born a christian yeah. like somebody born a brahmin mm. somebody a shudra mm. by birth they are that mm. they cannot change mm. that's why they want the shudras to always serve them yeah. see, uh, did they think it is their yeah. birth right mm. you know and see christianity is not like that mm. one should become a christian see for me refuting ahmadi that was fun because there was at least something to refute there mm. yeah. but this is so boring i mean there's no material to refute <laughs> well so, yes that is true yeah. we have been waiting for years now we have been waiting for almost uh, 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 you know at least one and a half year waiting for the material that this scholar would bring up and uh, we are tired of uh, you know those uh, um, we are tired of waiting for those scholarly material uh, at least just this time uh, you know at least this time not just allegations but some uh, some material will come out from these scholars so that uh, we can propagate yeah, the faith yeah so so from uh, uh, at least this time these scholars will bring up something new something for us to discuss and talk about uh, at least i would request uh, uh, you know the so called scholars uh, of whatsapp university uh, you know rajiv malhotra sahab at least this time you bring up some some you know some evidence for us to discuss about this and last time we invited you you ran away this time at least uh, you know let us have a discussion fair discussion thank you very much for watching